Okay, Mark Heath Stuart Watson here with you to discuss an issue that Ipswich Town are going to be facing going forward. Stu, Town won 2-0 impressively last night, Lincoln City. That would normally what we'd be talking about. But unfortunately, the main talking point kind of coming away from the game was injury issues. Um, following you last night as I was working, I was refreshing your, your feed on Twitter. And I did actually consider unfollowing you at one point because every other every other feed, every other tweet was a, was a player going down injured. Um so obviously two big names came off injured, Edmondson and Morsey. Um, others finished hobbling. Um, so I thought we'd have a chat this morning about how we'd approach that going forward. Saturday, clearly the start of a big run of games, Portsmouth at home. Um, and, and let's start, first of all, with, with what we expect to happen, which is, unfortunately, it sounds like Edmondson and Morsey will both be missing on Saturday. It's not confirmed as yet. Um, clearly, they'll be assessed today um, and we'll have to see what happens going forward. But it's certainly, in terms of those two, it looks very unlikely they'll be playing on Saturday. So how much of a blow is that and how do we approach replacing them in the squad for Saturday? No dressing it up, major blows. If you were to sort of make your list of players you'd least likely to get injured, Edmondson and Morsi would be right up there, wouldn't they? Um, Burns, you mentioned, and, and Wolfenden as well, picking up Knox, they'd be right up there as well. And, and as you said, we're going into a a real crunch make or break period now with, with Portsmouth at home on Saturday, Oxford away, then Plymouth at home, three teams at Ipswich are, are vying for a, a top six spot with. So as great as the win was last night, that second half just, I think, took a bit of a wind, wind out of everybody's uh, out of everybody's sails a little bit and you could feel it in the air at, at Portman Road. Um I think we've been calling this problem corner, haven't we? So we'll try and sort of address the uh, the problems here. This is going to be a real test of, of Kieran McKenna's uh, depth of squad for sure. Hmm. I mean, he said after the game that he's confident the squad is, is is big enough and good enough to cope. So let's approach it two ways, Stewie. We'll, we'll, we'll approach it first of all with Emerson and Morsey missing, which is by the sound of it probably what's going to be the case on Saturday. And then we'll do a worst case scenario with all the other players that finished hobbling or limping also missing on Saturday. Um, so do you want to start? You, you've drawn up two teams, very flashy mm -hmm. graphic, which we're about to flash up. Do you want to start with the, the team without Edmondson and Morsey on Saturday? We can have a chat about it. Yeah, as you say, those two look almost certain to be out for the weekend. Edmondson, all but confirmed by Kieran McKenna post-match mm. last night, said there's ankle damage there. It's very swollen. It's going to take a you know, a mad turnaround for him to be to be ready for Saturday. And you would imagine Sam Morsey with a hamstring will be the same. So, yeah, I've just gone for some fairly simple like-for-like -like changes here so as not to disrupt everything that, that Ipswich mm. Town are doing. Cameron Burgess comes in, as he did last night, for Edmondson at the back and Tom Carroll for Sam Morsey in midfield. Um it's like for like in terms of positions. It's not like for like in terms of style with either of those players. Mm. Cameron Burgess uh, is not as mobile a centre half as George Edmondson. He's not as comfortable on the ball as George Edmondson, but he has played a lot of football on the left side of a back three for Accrington Stanley. And he has played a bit of football in midfield in the early stages of his career at Fulham. It's which fans might remember him making his Fulham debut in, in central midfield at Portman Road. So mm. he said in his early interviews that he, he can, you know, he, he can play with the ball at his feet. And maybe Kieran McKenna can unlock something in him, as he's done with so many other players since he's, he's come into this squad. He, he, he's been full of praise for him, not just last night. In, in recent weeks, he's been very keen to kind of give Cameron Burgess mentions in his 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 various press conferences saying how uh, he's really contributing. Up until last night, he was the only player in the squad not to have got any minutes under mm. Kieran McKenna. But um, yeah, the Blues boss is confident that that he can he can take his chance, and, and we hope he does. And again, Tom Carroll for Sam Morsi. It's not a like for like in terms of style. Sam Morsi is, is grit, determination, drive. Um, a captain, really leading by example. A man who is bang in form and started to add a goal threat to his game as well. Um, Tom Carroll, I think people forget how experienced a player is, how many times he's played in the Premier League, mm. um, how good a player he is when he's fit. You know, the only reason he's in League One is because of his injury problems in recent years. And we've seen a few of those injury problems flare up, obviously, 
in his first season at Ipswich so far. So he's a good player. He'll, he'll contribute certainly to Ipswich's desire to dominate possession under Kieran McKenna, but he, he's not going to give you that same physicality. And, and the fear is obviously with no Evans and Morsi, mm. you're just going to lose a bit of that edge in midfield. You've gone from from that to two very technical players in, in Carroll and Backinson. So, um, but I think that's that's the least disruptive uh, model to go with. Um, the alternative, of course, would be to to play Bursant Selina a bit deeper, as was the case at Fleetwood um, a week or so ago. Obviously, it was only then when Selina got moved further forward later in the game when when the goals came for Ipswich, and he looks more effective further forward. But that would be an, another alternative for central midfield. Mm. How about someone like Idris El Mazzouni, Stu? We've, we've talked before about El Mazzouni. I think you've referred to him maybe being the most natural Morsi replacement. Is that something you, you factored into this thinking? Why would you still go with Carroll ahead of Idris? Yeah, stylistically, I'd say Idris El Mazzouni is the closest thing to Sam Morsi in terms of that that physicality, that edge. Mm. Um, it, you know, I'm sure Kira McKenna will look at the various opposition that they're up against and maybe think that that is a inverted commas, slightly more pragmatic option, just someone that gives you a bit more insurance. Um, but I just think Tom Carroll is is ultimately probably the better player out of out of those two. And if you're trusting mm. yourself to, to keep the ball and dominate the ball as well as you have done, then and hopefully that sort of mitigates that that need for someone that's going around smashing into tackles and, and doing things like that. So mm. um but El Mazzuni has to has to be part of the conversation because he's He's the like, like you said, he's the closest thing stylistically to uh, to Sam Morsi, I would say. And just before we move on to worst case scenario, it, for you, that's a, a fairly straightforward swap, is it at the back, Burgess for Edmondson? The thing that worries me about Burgess, I always think about Cameron Burgess, is him getting torn to shreds by League Two strikers at Barrow, um, and you know, clearly struggling for pace and mobility. Uh, yep. But you're quite happy to have him there as opposed to maybe moving him inside and having Wolfenden on the on the left. Um, yes, because as, as I say, he's played sort of left side of a back three for, for Atkinson. Mm. He's a left footer, and I think Wolfenden's kind of just oozing class in that sort of sweeper role at the moment. Just uh, so I, I want to minimise the disruption as much as possible. You, you're already sort of making a couple of changes that you don't really want to be. It's which are looking like a well-oiled machine at the moment. So mm. the less you can do to disrupt that, the better. But um, in terms of options, Burgess is the only other centre half Ips, which obviously let Toto Enciala go mm -hmm. in January. We, you know, at the time we talked about did they need to go and get another centre half? They didn't. That conversation went away quite quickly because the back three have, have been outstanding. But all of a sudden you're starting to look and think hmm, maybe they could do with it with another centre half there. Um then and we'll come on to the nuclear option if if Wolfenden was was to be out, you're then starting to talk about playing people out of position or dipping into the under 23s, which um, mm. is not ideal. No. Okay. Well, that's a good segue into the, into the nuclear. We'll just have a quick chat before we, we, we call up your team. So, Emerson Morsey, likely to be out there. Fairly straightforward. Obviously, Town will lose quite a lot uh, with those two players out, but that's how you'd approach replacing them. And it does seem fairly straightforward. Not straightforward at all. And clearly, a worst case scenario. This is not what we're expecting to, to be the case, but still worthy of discussion. Wes Burns, absolute talisman, absolutely on fire. 11 goals now for the season. He was hobbling at the end last night. Luke Wolfenden, we've said there, absolute class, part of that blue wall back line, which has kept 10 clean sheets in, in 14 games. He too looked like he was carrying a knock. And also Dominic Thompson on the left side there, the left wing back. Another one limping. It seemed like, as I say, every tweet that you put out towards the end of the game last night was just an update on another town player limping. Um, so it was, ridiculous. it was amazing. You, you, every yeah. time you kind of, there was a stoppage in play in your periphery, you'd just see another, a man in blue just kind of sat down on the turf and you're thinking, no, not, not again. Um, Wolfenden, he got through that second half, but you could tell when he, whenever he had to sort of accelerate and break into a sprint, there was, there was something there mm. that he was, that, you know, that wasn't allowing him to be as, as mobile as, as possible. I really hope that that's nothing nothing serious and that Ipswich didn't sort of have a risk sort of backfire on them by letting him go go to the end last night Burns was just a that was a, a tackle out on out on the out on the touchline that he came off with a 
with a knock from and, and Thompson has been sort of in the wars throughout his time at Ipswich so far has, has taken a few hits and knocks but hope, hopefully they are just that knocks that that they can come back from but if you start to talk about several of those players out then mm. then this squad which McKenna obviously trimmed in January he wanted to get it to a more manageable number to keep team spirit high to make everybody feel like they're involved and that's been great so far but now now we get the test of those numbers the real test right should we should we call up the worst case scenario your team if all those players are missing clearly yeah this would be a I bit th- of a nightmare but we talk <laughs> through it i think we need to say sort of <laughs> We need to stress that this is very much a, a worst case scenario talking point situation. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think everyone's going to be out for, for the weekend. Um, I'm hoping there's no nasty surprises beyond mm-hmm. Edmondson and Morsi. But nevertheless, we'll, we'll have a discussion and, and this, this kind of highlights what what the next options are for Ipswich. Centre half, as I mentioned, is, is going to be a real issue uh, if both Edmondson and Wolfenden are out. Um, Mm. option number one would have been, had he been available, Lee Evans. I think if you were talking about someone dropping into Mm defence, had he been fit, I think Lee Evans' range of passing, his physicality would have made him the most ideal candidate there. But obviously, he's not available. He's also Mm. injured. Option number two, you might then talk about moving to a back four because you've only really then got two centre-halves in Burgess and Danassian. Kane Vincent Young would would probably come in at right back, and you could play um, if everybody was out. You know, Penny at left back. As I've said earlier, I don't want to disrupt what Ipswich are doing. They're a well oiled machine. They've been playing this back three. I think they've they've got a fluidity about them. So mm. I, I want to be avoiding changing to to a back four. So then you're, you're talking about so who who comes in then to a back three? Um, Dominic Thompson would probably be able to play as a left-sided centre-back if he's fit. Um, So I think that would be the route I'd be going down if he's okay, and I think he will be. But obviously, we've gone for the nuclear option here where he's not available. So Mm -hmm. um, that's led me on to trying to find someone else that can do the job there. And reluctantly, I've probably gone with Tyreek Backinson to, to be the man to drop into there. He's six foot four, but he's not the most physical Mm. Uh, dominating player in that respect but he might be able to do that sort of Wolfenden uh, ice call sweeper mm. role he's certainly uh, he's got those same sort of laid back qualities Tyreek Backinson he's got a, a range of passing he might be able to to do the old give and go and, and surge out of defence in, in the way that we've seen Wolfenden do, Wolfenden do recently but there's no getting away from it. Looking at that back three there of Burgess, Backinson, Danassian doesn't quite have the same ring to it as what we've been seeing recently. There's there's one other option for that back three, which then becomes the left field option, is to dip into the 23s. And that would probably be Elkin Baggett would be the mm. man to, uh, to turn to there, um, who has got plenty of clubs looking at him and uh, is someone that obviously we've been talking about for, for a little while. So... Um, you wonder whether he might now uh, at least come into the first team picture if uh, if numbers are short at the back. But that's uh, that's the back three spoken about if uh, if Edmonton and Wolfenden are both out. Okay, and then midfield clearly we, we, without Burns uh, and without Morsey uh, is going to be very different. Uh, and as you can see there from your mm-hmm. graphic, it is very different. Just talk us through your your working out there or your thinking. <laughs> um, well, if Thompson's out. And Burns are out. I think Penny and Kane Vincent Young are sort of the the men to come in and replace them. Vincent Young is the the, the closest thing Ipswich have got to Wes Burns in terms of someone who is dynamic, who can take people on, um, who's got a bit of pace. Mm. Um, so I think he'd he'd come in on on that side. Um, Thompson, we've we've said it is out. Um, so Penny would have to be the one that comes in on the left. There again, if Carl Edwards was fit, I'd be saying give him a go on on left wing back role. And I think mm. they were starting to kind of work on him for that position. But again, he's injured. Um, central midfield. I've then gone because we've moved Backinson in defence. I've then gone for moving Selena into a deeper mid into a a deeper role as discussed earlier. And mm-hmm. because of that, 
I just don't think Selena and Carroll would would have it would be the right balance. So that's where I've gone for El Mazzuni just to uh, just to give that a little bit of extra grit to go alongside Selena. Let him let him let the shackles come off Bursant Selena in that deeper role. And it wasn't a complete disaster at. at um, at Fleetwood last weekend with Selena in that deeper role, there were some moments where he took the ball off the back three and was mm. very close to playing some dis- defense splitting forty yard, you know, ground passes from deep through the eye of the needle stuff. So I don't think we should dismiss that just because he was more effective sort of in those final twenty minutes when he mo- moved for- forward. I don't think we should dismiss that as an option going forwards. And as McKenna said afterwards, he's, he's played that role for Swansea, for Dijon, for Kosovo. So it's not completely alien to him. Um, Jackson has to has to play. Aluko was exceptional last night. Mm. Um, so I've got him in there. And and then I've, I've got Piggott back in the team, who I thought had his best game for Ipswich at Fleetwood um, last weekend, was perhaps a tad unfortunate to, to drop out mm. last night. So... As part of this major reshuffle, with how many players are we talking about being out? Five, I think. Five, in this yeah. Scenario that we're discussing might open the door for for Piggott, but um, yes, it's uh, a, a test of the squad for sure. Absolutely. That that then is the worst case scenario. Just to stress again, that's that's not what we think will happen. But just to just have a chat around the worst case scenario. If you get rid of that, and we can we can close this out, Stewie. Um, Kieran McKenna has ticked a lot of boxes since coming in as, as Ipswich Town Manager. He's, he's turned a lot of things round. Uh, and in this scenario, a bit of a, a mini injury crisis, we're going to learn even more about him, aren't we, as, as a manager? Yes, we are. And he might just do something that none of us are expecting because he's done that mm. several times so far. I'm sure he will be analysing the opposition for these games ahead and working out that, you know, there might be a game where you think actually the risk versus reward of, of playing Selena there, for example, or doing something slightly more pragmatic if you think there's strengths in certain area of the, the opposition. So the thing that I have to admit, I came away from the game slightly deflated last night by those injuries because mm-hmm. it just felt after those two goals went in, I'm thinking... They could do this, you know, it's the, the way that they're playing and the clean sheets mm. and the fact that they're starting to add some goals and, and Jackson, we were talking about a striker, an informed striker being the missing ingredient. And now Jackson's starting to play really well and score goals. But that just deflating when Morsi and, and Edmondson went off and those other injuries. But I've woken up this morning and thought if there's a man to... If there's a man to shuffle the pack and and work out tactically and get the best out of what he's got and to have ensured that these fringe players have have stayed sharp and motivated and are ready, it's Kieran McKenna. Mm. So we shall see. It's it's not ideal, is it? You want your big players for the big games and Ipswich are going to be without a couple of them by the looks of things. But... um, Mm. You know, this is this is a good squad, and these are good players that we're talking about stepping in. So hopefully they'll be okay. Hmm. Time will tell. Obviously, we don't know when we'll hear for sure about in, about these injuries. Uh, possible the club put something out today. If not, clearly you're going to be asking McKenna about that tomorrow. Just on a, a kind of approach, tactical approach in terms of uh, talking about injuries, Stu. We, we often lamented Paul Cook refusing to talk about injuries. If you were the manager, though, would you? Clearly, we want to know everything, and fans want to know everything about injuries, but. I think I'd play my cards pretty close to my chest if I was the manager. I'm not sure I'd be yep. confirming that big name players are out ahead of the game. I'd be trying to keep the opposition guessing as much as possible. Absolutely. I think there's there's times where it doesn't matter if you're talking about a long term mm. injury. How close are they coming back? That's just keeping supporters in the loop. You're not giving anything away. Mm. Um, but when you're talking about key players here that I think could make the difference between how Portsmouth set up for the game, then yeah. I don't think anyone at all would be blaming Kieran McKenna and the club for uh, for trying to keep this this quiet um, leading up to the game on Saturday because it's a it's a massive game. Portsmouth have won six of their last seven. Ipswich obviously won four nil there earlier in the season when when Paul Cook was in in charge. Um, it's a tasty game and and it might just be fine margins. And if Ipswich can gain themselves some by by keeping their cards close to their chest, then uh, I think everyone will be all for that. 
Mm, time will tell. There you go. Then that's what we do in, in the injury crisis, which is potentially facing town. We'll find out exactly how that plays out in due course. Um, let us know what you do in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.